2019 Week 9 College Football Predictions and Picks coming your way right now. Also, real quick, I apologize for not having this out last week. I'm allowed to miss one every now and then, right? Okay, now it's coming your way. Warning. All prediction and preview videos are recorded on the Friday prior to the week of the games covered. As a result, any injuries, benchings, and any and all information available to me in each team's last performance are unknown at the time of recording. As the season goes on, these will be more and more accurate. In other words, enjoy. What is up and welcome to another special edition of Lego on Fuego's College Football predictions and picks. Now, as I always say, this is just for fun, much like College Game Day does prior to the noon kickoff games. It's for entertainment purposes only and meant to be debated in the comments below respectfully. However, if you are mostly concerned with the spread picks, those will be pinned in the comments below as soon as I have the spreads available to me. In other words, don't hold me to my picks on this video. Make sure you check the pinned comments below. So far this year, I'm like 87 and 61 or something like that. I'll put it right here. So I'm pretty good on the year and I'm in first place in this channel's Yahoo College Football Pick'em. Still, I'm no expert. This is just a hobby. That's it, guys. All right, disclaimer over. Time to get to the video. We're gonna start off with what we always start off with, which is score for no reason, where I give you a score, but I don't give you a reason. Miami at Pitt. Give me Miami 30 to 25. Syracuse at Florida State. I'll roll with the no, baby. FSU 34 to 32. That rhymed. Virginia at Louisville. Louisville is looking like an improved team this year, but I actually like the Wahoos 29 to 21. Puke <clears throat> or a uh, Duke at North Carolina. Give me them heels. 33 to 24. Ah! Oh! Boston College at Clemson. This game was so much more intriguing last year. This time I like Clemson big, 45 to 14. Oklahoma at Kansas State. Boomer, 49 to 27. Sick nasty. That was dope. All right, now it's time for a game that I call least likely, mid likely, and most likely, where you give me three options, and I tell you the least likely to lose out of those options, the mid likely to lose out of those options, and the most likely to lose out of those options. What are those options? Texas at TCU. Nice, love those in-state rivals. What else you got? Iowa at Northwestern. A Big Ten West battle of brutes, gangsta. All right, and lastly, Washington State at Oregon. Ah, you had to give me a way out, huh? All right, guys, let's do this thing. Leroy Jenkins. I cannot get that video out of my head. For my least likely to lose, give me the Oregon Ducks. Quack! I like Washington State's offense, but I don't at all like its defense. This is a defense that gave up 67 points to the UCLA Bruins, and not the Josh Rosen UCLA Bruins. Now that should be all you really need to know, but I'll keep it going. They gave up 38 to Utah and 38 to Arizona State, and that Arizona State offense isn't exactly what we would call <laughs> explosive. Who can light up a scoreboard is my boy Justin Herbert and that Oregon offense. Losing tight end Jacob Breland was a major blow, but they'll figure it out. For my mid likely to lose, give me the Texas Longhorns. Now Texas could have easily been my least likely to lose here, but I'm giving TCU a little bit of credit just because of what they're capable of, not necessarily what I've seen out of them here in 2019 so far this season. I'm a Michigan fan. We tend to do that. Have hope when there's no reason to. Now TCU's losses to date don't don't look that bad on paper. They lost to SMU, which is a pretty good football team, and Iowa State, which is also a decent football team. Still, they did give up 41 points and 49 points in those two games respectively, and Texas's offense is way better than the offense of those two teams. I like Texas to win here comfortably, even with it being on the road. And for my most likely to lose, I don't think they will lose, but I'm gonna go with Iowa here. I'd be tempted to take Northwestern here. I really would. I'm a big fan of Patch Fitzgerald. I'm having a hard time believing that they're a one in five football team right now. And they won the Big Ten West last year and made it to the Big Ten Championship game. But I picked the Wildcats to upset Nebraska a few weeks ago and they let me down. Now they did cover the eight point spread, so that's good and all, but I picked you to win outright. For that reason, you can't be trusted. Not by me, at least. George Bush said it best when he said, Fool me once, you can't fool me tw twice. Y you fool me, you can't fool me again. <laughs> Look that video up if you don't understand that reference. Now, Iowa's offense will likely struggle in this one as they have for much of the season against any kind of defense with a pulse. But guess whose offense is just a little bit worse? Northwestern's. It looks bad. For that reason, I like the Hawkeyes to outduel the Wildcats and win this one. Nate Stanley and crew, don't let me down. Okay, time to go over three commenter questions. I've been doing this for a few weeks now, and I really have enjoyed doing so. It's been fun, and when something's going fun, you don't put an end to it. What are you, stupid? I'm not, I'm not saying you're stupid. 
subscribe to the channel still, I'm not, okay. So, the train says, yikes, you picked MSU over Bucky? Yikes, buddy. Yeah, I, uh, I unfortunately did. Thanks a lot for letting me down in a huge way, little brother. You're such a disappointment. But yeah, the train definitely didn't see that one coming. Awesome win for Wisconsin. They're a very good football team. I don't care what happens against Ohio State next weekend or what I predicted. Wisconsin's good regardless. Thank you for commenting on my video. My boy Wiss Cheese asks, are you getting paid on YouTube? Thanks for the question, Wiss Cheese. I do like to be transparent. I am actually up for monetization at this moment. I'm up for review. Not sure how long it takes. Some people say two days. Some people say a month. Some people say two months. But even when I do start getting paid, it will be very minimal. Nothing worth the amount of hours that I put into it. But I'm hoping to keep Keep working and growing at it and hopefully it makes some extra money so that I can take that money and put it towards a lot of debt and earn my way into being debt free. So seriously, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know I'm kind of a sentimental guy. I really, really, really do appreciate you guys because just by you pressing subscribe, which is free to you, it means a big deal to me. What you need to start getting paid on YouTube is 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, meaning people have to watch your videos for a total of 4,000 hours collectively. And a lot of people don't reach that goal, and I did, and it's thanks to y'all. And you, Wishies, thank you for the comment. Johnny Bravo asks, what's your overall record by wins and points? Says I need to start keeping these stats. Well, they're right here. I think I already have them in another part of this video, but yeah, they're right here. I'm pretty good against the spread, but I do like to make sure people know this is not a channel for betting advice. You're welcome to take my advice, but this is just more of a channel for fun and just talking the sport that we actually love. I had a friend the other day looking at my YouTube channel and he said, man, you're wasting a lot of time replying to people's comments. I completely disagree. Again, I've said it before, I'm worried about growing because at that point, I can't necessarily keep up with the comments, but that's the whole point of YouTube to me at least is the community. That's what makes it better than actual live television. So by not replying back, I feel like I'm just getting rid of that whole community aspect, which is what makes this fun. So yeah, I went on a little bit of a tangent there, but yeah, I'll try to remember to put that in my videos for now on my record against the spread. I don't have my win loss record straight up, but it's obviously going to be better than against the spread. Thank you for the comment. As always, some excellent questions. If I didn't get around to answering yours, no worries. I'm here all the time. Eventually, if you're commenting a lot, I'm gonna get to you. And regardless of if I do or not, please know that I really appreciate you and your contributions to this channel and this community. Comment of the week goes to two people this week, actually. First off, it goes to my cousin and my boy, Keith Lego. I don't love to show favoritism on this channel, but my dude's always been very supportive of me. Really appreciate that, cuzzo. Love you to pieces. He says, still no shout out? I'm hurt, cuzzo. Well, there's your shout out, cuzzo. Really appreciate you. But stop saying that Joe Milton should be Michigan's starting quarterback. That man's thrown 11 passes and two of them have gone for interceptions. He just ain't it. And Mower Man USA says, You are one bikini try and haul from 1.2k subscribers. Well, in an effort to get to 10,000. So what I really like about this one, guys, is just its versatility and its color. It says I'm here to party, but I'm also looking for a relationship. To my wife, if you're watching this, this is not what I do when you're gone, I promise. Next up, we have the segment, You Upset, Bro? This is where you give me two options of potential upsets this coming week, and I let you know one that you can have complete and utter confidence in. However, as a disclaimer, I've done this twice so far, and I didn't get either right. But I was close each time, so I don't know. Take it for a grain. This week, I'm choosing between Penn State at Michigan State and Indiana at Nebraska. Two Big Ten games. Let's get it. Now, of course, the upset bids in these two games will be Indiana and Michigan State. And as I wrote this, I had a hard time going with either one. I originally had Michigan State knocking off Ohio State. Luckily, I backtracked on that and said, no way, never mind. But I did pick them to win against Wisconsin. I stuck with that one. We saw what happened. 38 to nothing. That wasn't the upset bid I was talking about that was close earlier. That was in a whole different segment. Needless to say, I vastly overestimated the Michigan State Spartans. But this one seems a little bit different. Now, they've beaten Penn State two seasons in a row, and both of them were in games where maybe they weren't the better team. Indiana, on the other hand, they always play Michigan tough. They played Michigan State tough this season, but uh, they did get dismantled by Ohio State earlier. But who hasn't? So, who do I roll with here? I know. Let's try a coin flip. Actually, I don't have a coin, but I always have Carmex. Carmex, your official sponsor. Not there yet, no, not with this channel. Maybe later. All right, one, two, three. Kentucky over Missouri. Yeah, that wasn't even a game in the mix, but that's the one I'm going with. Penn State beats Michigan State, Nebraska beats Indiana, so my upset this week is gonna be Kentucky over Missouri. Make sure you check back in those pinned comments to see if I stick with that pick, because to be honest with you, that Oklahoma State-Iowa State matchup, depending on who's the favorite in that one, looks awfully tempting to pick. 
Okie doke. Time for Crush or Compete. This is where you give me some relatively okay games and I let you know if the favorite is going to crush the underdog or if the underdog is going to compete against the favorite. <laughs> Fire away. Southern Cal at Colorado. I don't know. Boy, oh boy. Has Colorado's defense been bad this year or what? What's weird though is even in that 45 to three defeat against Oregon, I still am stupid and have my eyes fixated on their 34 to 31 victory over Nebraska and their 34 to 31 victory over Arizona State. I think in this one, they're gonna hang in there with Southern Cal, but since it won't be 34 to 31, they're not gonna win. I'm gonna take Southern Cal 37 to 30, but yes, Colorado competes. Next, Arkansas at Alabama. Next but it's a huge rivalry game and next. Oh man! <laughs> we got into that guy. How about Mississippi State at Texas A&M? Ah, the battle of the disappointments. Look, I know that Texas A&M's losses at the time of writing this are Auburn, Clemson, and Alabama, and I'm not exactly knocking them for those losses, but I am knocking them for how they looked in those games, which is not very good. They just didn't show up and they figured to be a team that would show up this season, especially with Mon returning and that receiving core. They also looked whack against Arkansas, only beating them 31 to 27. So yeah, I know Mississippi State has looked awful this season as well and they even lost to Tennessee, but nothing the Aggies have done this season have proven that they can crush an opponent if that opponent is a power five team. So why in the world would I say that they could crush the Bulldogs here? Because it's my show and because I can. I'm gonna say crush for the Aggies, 41 to 24, gig them. Okay, let's do some quick picks before we get into the three big games of this weekend, which would be Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan and Notre Dame, and Auburn LSU. What do we got until then? Cal at Utah. Love this game. Love the Pac-12 in general, man. The craziest stuff always happens in that conference. I really like Cal's defense, but I absolutely cannot trust their offense. I think both of these defenses in general are pretty similar in the fact that they're both pretty darn good, but I feel like I don't want to overthink this here. Utah has the better offense, and this game is at home. Give me the Utes, 24 to 19. As a third reminder, my actual picks against the spread will be penned in the comments below on Monday or Tuesday. South Carolina at Tennessee. Boy, this game just got a little bit more intriguing, didn't it? For Tennessee, the question mark is who's gonna play at quarterback? I have no idea. You, of course, have already seen the Alabama game at this point, so you probably have an inkling. I felt like Maurer played pretty well in the first half against Georgia and then not so much. And Garantano looked good when he came in his place in the Mississippi State game. But those Gamecocks, well, they knocked off the mighty Georgia Bulldogs on the road. Traditionally, this Gamecocks Vols game is a very good one. They have played in some extremely tight and down to the wire ball games. I expect this to be no different. I think South Carolina will be favored by a decent amount. I don't think they're gonna cover the spread. This one will be closer than the experts think. I'm gonna say South Carolina 27-24. Kansas at Texas Tech. Get the heck out of my video. What, I was just out? Liberty at Rutgers. Seriously, who is letting these guys in? Uh, Illinois at Purdue? Mother! Arizona at Stanford. Away from me. All right, enough of that. Let's give some beef to these next three games while not wasting anyone's time. Capiche? All right, tight, let's go. Let's start with Notre Dame at Michigan. I'll make this pretty simple. If Michigan loses to Penn State this weekend, which you've already seen, of course, we're going to also lose to Notre Dame. At that point, we will no longer be in Big Ten title contention, which was our first real goal here. We will not have lived up to the standards that were set this season, and we are only just a mere fraction of where we actually need to be at this point. Notre Dame, on the other hand, played a very competitive game against the Georgia Bulldogs on the road, and they still have those college football playoff aspirations in front of them, regardless of the fact that they don't play a conference championship game. However, they did only beat USC by three, which is no bueno for them because they need to take those big games that they do have left remaining on their schedule and win by a larger margin. They'll be cognizant of that here, and if Michigan lost to Penn State, they'll smell that blood. If Michigan beats Penn State though, and that's a big if and a big ass when you're talking about a whiteout game, I think we will beat Notre Dame in Ann Arbor. And then all of a sudden, what was a disaster of a season could give a glimmer of hope. I won't hold my breath for that though. Our offense has been atrocious and a whiteout game at Happy Valley isn't exactly where you go to find something better. 
So yeah, Notre Dame wins if Michigan loses to Penn State. Michigan wins if they beat Penn State. Next up, we've got Auburn at LSU. Now, I've been hard on Bo Nix this season, and rightfully so. The good news for Nix, though, is that that LSU defense and secondary has not been as good as advertised coming into the season. And unfortunately, I was one of the ones that advertised it. A couple key questions here. Can that extremely talented Auburn defensive line put pressure on Joe Burrow that he hasn't seen most of the season, if not all of the season? If they can, they've got a fighter's shot. If they cannot, there's no way that Auburn offense is going to keep up with that LSU offense. It still feels weird saying that. If the line can get pressure, I think Auburn can make it like a 34-27 type of game, but they'll still be on the losing end. If they can't get pressure, give me LSU 40 to 26. Either way, I'm sorry Auburn fans, you guys have been excellent and huge supporters of this channel, but I think LSU wins regardless. Also, to be honest with you, I'm kind of rooting for LSU. I'm very intrigued by that LSU-Bama matchup, and I want them both to be undefeated when they clash. It's go Tigers and not War Eagle for me this weekend. Sorry, Carson. Sorry, Will. And lastly, a very, very good Wisconsin team on both sides of the football against a very athletic and fast Ohio State football team. And a much improved and dare I say good defense there in Columbus. It's weird how Alex Grinch went to Oklahoma and they got better on defense and Ohio State got better on defense. It's just, just both teams just got better. Maybe that was just what was supposed to happen. Now I know both of these football teams very well. I watch a lot of them to see if Michigan has a chance in beating them. Nope. We do not have a chance. Thanks, Honest Me. So where I think Ohio State is going to have the edge here is just straight athleticism and finesse and coaching. Wisconsin is a very sound team. They're a very fundamental team, but they're pretty vanilla on both sides of the football. Good, but vanilla. When I'd rather see Strawberry. I love Paul Christ, man. I love his attitude. I think he's an excellent football coach, but he's just too basic in my opinion. Don't get mad at me. It's just my opinion. I just don't think that he's dangerous enough. And in a huge game like this, on the road like that, in Columbus, in the horseshoe, you have to be Baker Mayfield. You have to be dangerous enough. You got to take some risks. You got to do some things that are outside your comfort zone. Now, I've seen more of that out of Paul Chris this year than most years, but he hasn't been tested the way that Ohio State's going to test him. Will he make those same decisions in that scenario? Wisconsin, to me, has just not proven that they can win these types of football games, most notably in the Big Ten Championship games that they've been a part of. While they don't lay flat in those games outside of the Cardell Jones year, they also don't come out on top. If you watch this channel enough, you know that I do like to go out on a limb a lot. But in scenarios like this where there's just a common trend that I can see, I'm more of a I'm gonna have to pick against you until you show me kind of person. I do that with pretty much any team. Like take for instance the top tier SEC football teams. Anytime in the regular season, not bowl games, but in the regular season when they're up against another power five conference of equal or same caliber or the same kind of level in terms of where they are in the conferences, I always go with the SEC. And why wouldn't you? You're gonna be right more than you're gonna be wrong. Evident these last two years when I took Auburn against Washington and now Auburn with Oregon this year. Same concept here. Until Wisconsin proves otherwise that they can win this type of game, I gotta go with the arch nemesis, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Now it's no secret who I'm rooting for. On Saturday, I'll have my fifth quarter shirt on. On Wisconsin. But I have to use my head here and not my heart. Wisconsin's chance of winning this one is going to be up front on both sides of the football. Unfortunately for them, Ohio State's coaching staff is apparently smarter than ours because they know what Wisconsin does well and they look to take it away from them. Wisconsin's forte is going to be tested here. So yeah, I'll take Ohio State in a close one, 31 to 28. All right, so there you have it. My week nine, college football predictions and picks. I hope you enjoyed them. I always enjoy making them, except last week I didn't have the energy, sorry. At the time of writing this, 1,201 wonderful people have subscribed to this channel, helping me to make my dreams come true of starting a YouTube channel and possibly paying off my student loans, at least one by one. It's of course free to subscribe, so if you want to, you can do so right here. It'd mean a lot to me. This dude's going to earn paying off student loans. Yep. Buddy. Okay, I'm Lego on Fuego. The fire's out for now, but it will be. But it will be back up and running again real soon. See you guys then. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. I hope you guys have a good time watching football this weekend. Don't kiss your cousin unless she's hot. I shouldn't have picked Kentucky in the upset. Now I'm thinking like a bluegrass resident.